I'm Ron Means and I'm doing this video to accentuate how we need to turn the page. I'd like to talk about life in general, life in Texas, life in America and these three stories that I'm about to share with you accentuate that. Hope you think about it because they're real. Thank you. Enjoy. My name is Abdul Dixon from Austin, Texas. Um, and uh, I was asked the question, uh, what is the first racial situation that I remember? Uh, uh, what came to mind was uh, there was a situation where we were, I was living uh, in the neighborhood projects, I guess, and uh, there was a neighborhood grocery right in the middle of the projects, and uh, I remember going to the store uh, without, without my mom or uh, any of my family. Had a little money, and uh, I can remember going into the store, and uh, you know how it is when you're a kid, you got money in your hand, you like, first you think, well, I'm going to get this, and then you, nah, then you walk around, maybe over here, and you say, I'm going to get this, and you say, nah, I ain't going to get that. And you were trying to think of something that you could get that would last, and that was good. So uh, I realized that uh, the gentleman uh, was an Oriental guy who uh, owned the store, who was behind the counter. I uh, wasn't really paying attention. Then I really looked up and realized that he was staring and following me the whole everywhere I went around the store. And so I'm like, my God. And uh, finally, you know, caught on. And uh, he finally yelled uh, something like, you know, make your decision. Get whatever you need to get and get out. And I'm saying, you know, I got money. I'm spending money in your store. And, and uh, you know, pardon me. I'm trying to make my decision. I'm a kid. And I could get, you know, now later, I could get soda and a honey bun. I mean, I... You can mix it up. And uh, I remember feeling like, my God, did you think I'm a thief or something? And, you know, sometimes, you know, those stereotypes are what shape people's thinking. And we're seeing a lot of uh, racial thing in the news, uh, a lot of uh, people coming forward saying uh, that uh, my particular opinion on race is the best one. But for me, uh, I believe everybody is deserving of a chance to prove. You know, if it's, you know, 10 people and all 10 of those people are thieves or bad or not right, I still believe one, the next person deserves an opportunity. That's it. Thank you. Vernon Creighton, I remember a situation, I think it was near 1968, Stonewall's National Bank, where my wife was a school teacher in Nacogdoches and we had an account at that bank. And for some reason, uh, I had came through Nacogdoches to visit my wife and uh, I needed to go by the bank to get some money. So I went into uh, Stonewall National Bank and going in the bank I saw black people standing in one line. I never will forget this white girl with the thick big red lips standing with her hand up under her chin biting on her fingernails. So after standing in this black line for a couple of minutes and I realized that I had somewhere else to be. I went to this white girl and she says, sir, sir, I can't help you. I say, why? She said, because 
this is the white line and the black line is where black folk are. So I said, well, if you can't help me, you need to get the president or the manager of this bank because if you can't help me, I want my money out of this bank. And the guy came over and he said, how can I help you? I said, well, I'm talking to this lady. This lady says that she can't help me because I'm black and this line over here is for black folks and this line over here is for white folks. So if that be the case, I need to have all my money out of the bank. And I guess he thought that when he went and looked at the bank book, he was looking at giving me four or five hundred bucks. I had forty thousand dollars in that bank. And when he found that out, he said, Well, sir, can we work something else out? I said, No, sir, because you're taking out my time and by that time I had put on my ID badge that said that at that time I was a federal employee working for NASA. The whole situation changed for me. But it didn't change for the other people that were standing in line. It was going to continue to go on. So the guy said, okay, well, I'll let me go get you a check for your money. I said, no, I didn't put check in this money. I put cash in this money, in this bank. I want $40,000 counted out of me in cash, and I can put it in my attache case, and I can take it and put it into another bank who's going to deal with me. So he thought, the guy, he thought that that was the most ridiculous thing that he'd ever heard, but it, it, it was an insult to me because, I mean, at, at, at what point are men seen as a man and not as a black man or a white man? That was my experience of racism. And it, I don't know, does it still exist? Yes, I think it does in a lot of different ways, and people just don't talk about it anymore. But that was my experience. My name is Glenn Hudson. I'm here to tell you about um, my, I wouldn't say my first, but my most notable uh, racial uh, ex experience that I've gone through. I want to say about 2012. Um, towards the fall of 2012, I was working for ARS um, as a HVAC technician, and I received a call out into Lago Vista, um, a house. They just wanted a traditional uh, heating and cooling check, and I went out there, thinking everything would be normal, normal routine, uh, in and out, you know, do the job. And as I um, pulled up, I got a call from dispatch, and I was told that the uh, customers, I guess, was uh, was upset because of um, they had been waiting or their schedule had got mixed up, so they were already pretty hostile or, you know, pretty upset or irritated. So I took that with caution and, you know, went inside um, or went towards the door, and I was kind of preparing myself, you know, just to be nice to them and hear them out. And as I was walking to the door, I seen uh, or I saw um, the lady looking out the window and I heard her say, oh, here comes the little nigger. And I was like, what? You know, as I was walking to the door, but I should have turned around and just left. But I went ahead and proceeded. So as I got to the door, I uh, spoke to them, asked how they were doing. Started, you know, like normal, trying to get everything set up and explain. Well, they proceeded to um, yell at me about how they thought I was the guy that was supposed to come out there from the beginning. About how tardy I was, things like that. So I tried to explain to them that I had just received a call, came out here as soon as possible. And if you would like, I'll go ahead and do the work for you. And I'll leave. I'll get out your hair. Just look, go ahead and let me finish the job and we'll be all good. Well, the gentleman, the husband, he continued to argue with me. Now, the wife was over on the kitchen counter. She was cutting up vegetables. She had a knife. Cutting up vegetables. 
doing her thing. So while he was talking to me, and he started to escalate his voice, I asked the gentleman, I said, sir, go ahead, show me where the things are, and I'll take care of it, and then we'll address everything later. And he continued, continued to holler. And then I told him, sir, if you go, if you're gonna continue to talk to me like this, because he was saying some negative things, he was starting to get a little rowdy. I said I would leave. And the wife, while cutting her vegetables, I guess she heard me say that, and she came over with the knife in her hand, and was upset, telling me, "No, boy, you gonna get up here and you gonna go check our units." And I was like, "Whoa, you know, <laughs> no, ma'am, I'm not checking anything." Right now, you coming at me, you got a knife in your hand, and you telling me what I'm going to do in your house. You know, and I've been trying to do my job the whole time since I've been here. And then the gentleman, when I said no, he grabbed me by the arm and was trying to drag me to where his unit was. You know, the funny thing is, this whole time, I've been trying to check on the unit, and they <laughs> wouldn't let me. Now, all of a sudden, they want me to do it. You know, just a waste of time. Uh, but as he proceeded to grab me, now these, this guy, I believe, he was in his 70s. Uh, it looked like um, his wife was kind of elderly also. And I had some thoughts on grabbing him and throwing him down. You know, just doing anything. Because when somebody put their hands on you, especially in a situation where you're out here to a town that you've never been. It's Lago Vista. Um, I don't know these people. I'm in their house. I don't know if they part of some crazy organization or what. I don't know what's going to go on. I don't know. My life right now is being threatened. And, you know, so it's a lot of things going through my mind. But I just know one thing. I need to get out of here. So I checked myself away, grabbed my items, and I proceeded leaving out the door. And they were following me, talking crazy. Um... Thanks be to God, I was able to get out the house and get in my vehicle, and I drove away and immediately called dispatch and told them, I do not ever want to be sent out here. I don't even want to come out to this town ever again because these people were rude. They called me the N-word, and they were just, just downright just terrible people. And you know, everybody is uh, able to have a bad day, but when you go and you coming at somebody with a knife and you putting your hands on someone, you know, bad things can happen. So um, I'm grateful that I got, a, got out of that a lot, but um, I wouldn't have called this a racial um, incident if not the woman hadn't called me the N word, you know, you, and she said, nigger, okay, N I G G E R, you know, so when you kind of hear that, you kind of think of back in the day when they used to say that, say those things. So, kind of took me, kind of, you know, blew me away for a little bit, um, just considering that I heard it. And it was my first time ever um, just actually hearing it from an adult. As far as to, I was only like 21 at the time, so just hearing it and hearing it, the um, just the anger in their voice and, and just kind of how they meant it when they said it. Because she didn't know that I heard, or maybe she did, but it didn't sound like she knew I heard and she was speaking to her husband. So, you know, that just drew me to a conclusion that, you know, they probably didn't really welcome any brothers in their house uh, that much. But... Um, yeah, that was a, an experience, and I'm um, glad I made it out alive, but that's all I got.